thanks everyone for being here. My name is Ben Coffey. I'm the training manager for HydroPoint. I have Ben Slick with me. Say good morning, Ben. Good morning, everybody. Ben Slick in the office for the first time in the COVID era. So uh, is, is there a bunch of people there or is it just yeah. you and Chris Bain? Yeah, yeah. Just nice. we're, we're as socially distant as it can be. There you go. And our special guest today is Andy Clarkson from Nashville, Tennessee. Say good morning, Andy. Hey guys, how's everybody doing? And I will go ahead and get us kicked off here. Um, whoop, that is not what I meant to be showing. Let's see. Sorry, sorry. There we go. We are in with Smart Water Wednesdays. Uh, today we will be discussing mobile mapping. So a uh, lot of discussion in my world about um, the innovation that WeatherTrack recently added called mobile mapping. Um, and I just wanna reinforce what a valuable add that is to not only the technology, but to the water management process. For my water managers out there, they're loving it. And we have Andy Clarkson on the phone, who is a very experienced WeatherTrack user um, and has recently posted on social media his experiences with the mobile mapping, which I love. Thank you for the shout out. I yes, saw sir. that. And we're just going to dive right in. Um, Andy, tell me a little bit about how you're using mobile mapping. Let's see. So. No, it was, it was a great experience. I actually, uh, it was uh, up at a high school in Cookville, Tennessee. It was a recent install on a uh, baseball field, and we're actually doing the softball field and the practice field, and they'll come on here in the next couple months. But uh, I was on my way uh, to East Tennessee and uh, called a customer and just said, hey, I'm coming through town. Uh, do you mind if I stop by? Would you like to hang out with me? And he said, I'm tied up. I said, well, I need to go over to the school. School's in session. Luckily that nobody came out and ran me off, but uh, the experience was great. You know, I went, knew where the controller was located, went pin the controller, uh, master valve and flow sensor where that's going to be located. Uh, made my way to the uh, to the baseball field and just found found the first head and just uh, started walking along and just uh, was able to start dropping pins as far as where the sprinklers were located, identify those guys as far as uh, what brand it was. It's had a one inch swing joint on it. Um, same thing, then moved down, found the valve, uh, put in the, uh, the make of the valve, uh, the size. Um, the purchase price, I, I didn't put in, in there because the coaches are gonna have access to that stuff. So I'm not sure what the contractor led on to those guys. So I'm not gonna put purchase price in, but I was able to kind of put, you know, identifications in there, this head, this valve's on the first base side, foul line parallel to the maintenance facility where the mower's located or move up the line to where the baseball locker room's located um, and just followed my pen and just uh, the little blue dot, it, it, it went with me. So um, it was a great experience. That's awesome. And one of the things that I like about it is um, as an irrigation tech, I know that these maps I always made when I was working on a property, but it was standard procedure that uh, when I left a property, that map came with me. And so even if this information lives somewhere, it doesn't really live on beyond the one person who's managing the system at a time. Um, ben Slick, you have a, a name for that. You call it institutional knowledge, is that right? Corporate memory. Yeah, you know, it's just basically a way of <clears throat> capturing the information that belongs to you. I mean, you're the site owner, and even though the maintainer may have taken the time to capture those assets and put them on a printed map, you paid him to do that. And so at the end, if that map walks off site, you've lost what you paid for. And so this is a way of just retaining your intellectual property and creating that corporate memory. Yeah. Um, and, well, what, and the one thing I like about it is, uh, especially, in the, whether, especially in the high school ranks, maybe not college or uh, call it even the NFL or something like that. But in high school, to me, you see a lot of turnover with football coaches, baseball coaches, stuff like that. And, and the school system is the one who actually bought this controller. So the information is gonna stay there. So the next coach that comes in line will be able to use that information to locate heads, valves, when that other coach moves on. If it's a contractor on a, on a commercial site, an Amazon building, let's say, um, you know, those guys are gonna be gone in a year anyway. So would they take the time to do it? Maybe, maybe not. but. They may, like what you're talking about, they may take that information with them and not 
pass it on if they if they were. Right, and that's exactly the point, I think. If you are on a corporate site like that and you're gonna have constant turnover, well, mm -hmm. the incumbent, the, the new guy on site has to relearn the entire system and you're paying him by the hour to go and learn those things. And so it might be a worthy investment to encourage them or even pay them to go out and collect this information so you have a resource that you own and control. Uh, if, right. if you're managing those type of sites or those type of systems. Right. So let me jump into the demonstration here. Um, we have, this is, today is going to be mostly demonstration. Uh, I'm not a lot of slideware. We did a lot of slideware last week. So um, we're going to stick to the demos this week. Let's see if I can pull this guy up here. In theory, there we go. Practice. Ben Slick, are you seeing my smartphone? I'm seeing a big old fish. A big yes. old fish. All right. So um, the demonstration starts here, right? When we're talking about these features, we are talking about WeatherTrack Mobile 3.0, which looks like this right here on my son's belly. Um, if you are operating off of one of these older WeatherTrack mobile apps, it's time to upgrade. It's a free download from the Apple or Google Play Store, Apple App Store or Google Play Store for Android users. Please, please constantly uh, stay up to date with what WeatherTrack is doing. And another tip I've run across, um, make sure in your settings that this is set to auto, um, auto re-up or to stay current. Um, we have been releasing small changes to um, the mobile app, and I came across a user who had mobile 3 on his phone yesterday, but didn't have the current version. Um, and so make sure you're staying current, um, and that way you'll have things like this mobile mapping. Let's see, log in with our demo account here. Oh. And with your username and password, you gain access to your WeatherTrack account. Inside your WeatherTrack account are all of the sites, accounts, and controllers that you've been authorized to view and to manage. Hey, hey Ben, one thing I ran into the other day, and you and I talked about this, and, and it could have been just been user error on my end, but once I got the update a couple days ago, a few days ago, I could pull up my maps. And basically, I had to go in back into my settings on my phone and go to the weather track app and put my location in there just so if, it, if it run, anybody runs into that out there and you can't pull your map up I would start there first yeah location services it will ask you initially on on your first download if we can have access to your location uh, that is an essential part of the mapping tool to be able to find you and to put you in the map um, so absolutely great point Andy so when you log in the first time, you'll see all of the sites and accounts that you've been authorized to view and to manage. In this account, we have all my corporate demo sites. I actually added this Cookville High School that Andy was using as his example, if we want to look at that a little bit later. But we are actually going to use my own site, my own house today. Notice that on WeatherTrack Mobile, the site that's closest to you is filtered to the top of the list, making it easy to find on your phone when you're battling the glare in the field. So first thing we do is choose the site that we want to manage and choose the controller that we want to manage. And this will bring up the manual uh, irrigation application. If you wanted to run stations manually or check programming, you could do all of that from here. What we want to discuss today is the nuanced detail of mapping. And that lives up here in the upper right hand corner under the map pin. And so if I go into the mapping icon, it will take me to my site and it gives me this overhead view of the site. It takes a minute while I'm running through my demo software. But you can see my house there. And as I scroll down in, you can see my own physical location, which will be inside the house today. But I scroll in and I get closer and closer and I can start to see all of the different icons or all of the different assets that I manage, where I've installed my valves. You can mark all sorts of um, irrigation components, any sort of landscape features that you want to mark in your map. 
Um, it's super valuable long-term because you can access the information to, this, uh, to these assets. You can go through and say, um, what valve is this? And it will not only give you the station name, a number, but you can access the information to that valve. You can click that little I button where you can take pictures of this asset. You can go in and um, literally identify what valves you're talking about and take pictures of not only what valves, what the valves look like in that valve box, oops, but where, oh, where did I go? Come back. Got a little click happy there, sorry. Now, I took one picture of the valve in the valve box and then one picture of the valve box in the field. So just as an example of what you might do, you can have up to four pictures per asset. Um, makes it easy to find, like especially if that valve box is under a bush or, or hidden somewhere in a unique location. Um, just adding a couple of pictures is really an important part of the process. Um, you can also check out the other details. I went in here and um, you can assign this valve to your site and to your controller um, and to a particular station. Come on. Wait for it. Sorry, my running the Zoom meeting slows all of my demonstrations down a little bit. But as we go through, uh, you can see behind the the gray out the pictures back there let's cancel caught in a loop here um, and i'll show you the rest on this demo so what we want to talk about is adding assets into this map and when you are on the weather track mobile we've got this little add button right here at the bottom of the screen if i am walking the site Notice me over here, I am this blue dot, right? So this is actually my physical location. And if I hit add, it's going to add an asset into the map and I can choose whatever I want. I, let's say I wanna add a station valve. I select the type of asset that I want to manage and it drops it right on that blue dot. So as you're walking the site, you can stand on a valve box and mark that valve box. Now, the Details about Google Maps is that that icon might be as much as 10 feet off in any direction, right? Um, because they've put a flat map on a round earth. So we have this verification step that says, all right, we put it on your blue dot, but we want you to physically locate it. So I wanna say, I know my valve box lives like right there in the backyard by the trampoline. So I drag it to the location and verify its location. And once I've got it exactly where I want it, I hit that check mark and it says, all right, that's the location is secure. Now I want you to fill out as much information about this particular asset as you want. Remind everyone they have to unlock that map before they can do that move, right? Uh, no, that is when you're moving existing assets, not when you are uh, putting in new. Okay. So the, the verification step you don't have to unlock for, but I'll show you how to move existing assets here in just a second. So once you are on this details page, the asset details require that you attach that asset to a controller. And if it's a station-based asset like a valve, it asks you to say which valve you've attached it to. So we're gonna say that this is um, the, the deck grass asset. Okay, and then I can go through and define as much or as little of this information as I have patience to fill out. But the more you put in here, the more valuable it becomes, right? What type of valve do I have? Um, who made that valve? What size is it? And as a maintenance provider, this is critical information long-term because if I get an alert on this valve, I can simply pull up this asset and know exactly the valve that I'm talking about. And if I have to grab a diaphragm kit or a solenoid, bring it with me to do some troubleshooting, um, this can save me just a ton of time. So I have that stuff with me um, before I go to the site uh, and not have to get to the site and then run and see Andy at the distributor to um, buy the right parts, right? Eliminate a lot of that windshield time. We will welcome you though. 
Don't get me wrong. We will love you. <laughs> I'm saying visit Andy before you go to the site, not stop visiting Andy. <laughs> hey, Andy, you were mentioning too in your example where you'd go to a ball field and you'd identify the valve, but then you'd start walking and you'd identify the heads that go on that valve. Are yes. you building a as built of the irrigation system? Live in as built. Yeah, live in as built. And, and I do know uh, back in the winter when we are, you know, I was placed, I guess, February, um, is what we want to try to incorporate. I want to be able to walk, walk the field or even a site and build my living as built that way, but overlay our irrigation plan into this where it actually identifies like where the foul like where the, line, where the pipes are going and stuff like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we so i mean it's kind of a two-fold type deal where you can have the irrigation design to begin with and then like say just tag all your assets on the back end good to know the difference between the as built and the was built right exactly exactly <laughs> yes 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 and so, yeah. you're lucky enough to be in on the installation side where you have access to all of this information right, right. that is right you got to seize that moment and get it all into the system because once right. it's living in the landscape those valve boxes get grown over they're hiding under bushes they're they're hard to find right so, right and a lot and a, you know i mean obviously you know having a phone is good but a lot of people like a hard copy i mean as far as maybe a, a site manager that has an office he can literally like put something up on his wall he can have that visually, but also be able to look on the laptop or his phone as well. Absolutely. All right, back to the demo real fast. We'll get back into this. All right, come on. There we go. Uh, one thing I did want to, to highlight is the ability to leave notes. Um, any asset you can leave a maintenance history for. And I know that um, for the folks who maintain these systems year after year, for the city folks or the school folks who have uh, a running record of maintenance on these assets, that can be a super valuable tool. You can see, hey, I was out here troubleshooting this same valve last summer, or I was out here troubleshooting this same valve last week, right? And, and that really lends itself to efficient management, knowing exactly what's going on out on your site and, and what you need to do to keep up. So we will save this. Um, again, none of it's required. Uh, only, the, only the details of what station this attaches to is required. Uh, now, if I have put this in the wrong location, uh, I have an existing asset now and I wanna move it. Um, <clears throat> this is a locked map. So to move any assets uh, in the locked position, as I move stuff around, it's just gonna move the picture. Um, I won't be able to grab an asset and move it. So to move an existing asset, I need to come up here to this lock icon and unlock this map. And then I'll be able to grab and drag and drop the asset into a new location. So um, that is a handy trick. Um, once you're done, please return it to the locked position because there's nothing more frustrating than having things move around without your permission. Um, uh, if, you, if you open it up, we, uh, we had a funny story the other day uh, on the size of the valve. Uh, just, you know, so many people are so used to just typing in three back slash quarter inch valve or one inch valve or inch and a half valve. Well, we had a story the other day where a gentleman tried to put one, one he was trying to put one space half in the, in there like one backslash two and yep. he kept, kept and it kept kicking him out kicking him out so he just said i'm gonna put one one two one one two one one two and went down the whole list and put one one two just know that it's 1.5 1. 1. 1.5 the slash isn't an acceptable icon in there yeah. absolutely yeah. there are some nuances on, as right. to what the the typing will allow yeah, um, yeah. That's, that's a great point for sure yeah. Hey Andy, do you do you wind up training contractors as they come in about how to use this feature and encourage them? Yes. Does it become yes. a business model for them to try to do this for as a it service? Does. It does. Yeah, I mean, and that's and, and like on my demo on the Cookville High School, I did two thirds of the field uh, by myself, and that's what I told the contractor. I will be back up next week, and we will finish the other third with you and your lead man doing it yourself. That way, they understand as they go. I mean, because like I say, it's a huge selling point for them. Uh, for the next job as well. 
I, I think. But yeah, we we train them day in and day out. And is this something that uh, I know that I have added into my training um, as installing contractors are just putting their weather tracks in and they're turning stations on and doing all the weather track programming. I've added as best practice, also drop a pin. Mm -hmm. Are you doing that as well? Yes, yes. Because I, yeah. I think it's a significant value add. Like, Absolutely. All right, so let's talk about some of the specific icons that you might see. Uh, I do like this icon specifically. Uh, it's called Station Location. This little water droplet um, that is designed not to identify where a valve location is, but literally where the heads come up in the field. And that to me makes a ton of sense and is the easiest thing to document. Um, so this is what I'm doing on a site walk. I'm not necessarily digging up valve boxes to find them, but I am marking where the water runs when I turn on that station. And the idea for weather track is that long term we see um, this being the view of the manager. They're not going to be running through all the lists where um, they have to find the right station. They'll literally see themselves on the map. They'll see the location of where the water's running on the map. And then all they have to do is push that station location button. And this particular asset ties directly to the manual function. And so you'll be able to just hit start. And I'm going to water down my dog right now. You hit start and it takes you right to um, the manual page. It will initiate irrigation on that station based on the programming for your manual functions. And then as soon as you're done, you can hit stop. And when you hit stop, it will stop the irrigation and we can just go right back into the map. So it makes it very easy to navigate around the site and to kind of see what you're doing um, and really interact with the irrigation system on a much more granular level. Very easy to see and manage the system from this map view. And we continue to explore ways that we can um, enhance that for you. Now, one thing I didn't highlight that I want to are all of the options for assets that you can add. Right? We talked about station valves and station location, but it's the one-offs that, that your site might only have one or two of that you really need to be paying attention to. We've got backflow preventers, points of connection, rain sensors are a key thing to be able to mark. And as I scroll down, notice that uh, we do have some stuff specific for two-wire because those two-wire systems need the maps so desperately, right? We want to make sure that we're using all of these mapping tools and incorporating anything that you might need, um, including storm drains and trees, quick couplers, all of it, right? And if you don't find what you're looking for um, as a predetermined pin, we also have this custom pin that you can make anything you want. And one of the cool things I, or one of the things that I think is cool is our engineers are constantly receiving updates on what people are using these custom pins for. And so if we see repeat offenders, we see the same thing being made a custom pin over and over again, our engineers will just make that into one of the pre-selectable pins. Um, so definitely use those custom pins if, if you don't find on the map what you're looking for. One of the things that I've heard customers say they really use this for is look, putting down where their isolation or gate valves are. So in the event they've got a break somewhere, they know where in the field immediately to go to not shut the whole main down, just to isolate that hydrozone or that area. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, so um, that's kind of just the super high level of the mapping. It is designed to be easy. It's designed to be um, useful for you in the field as you're walking around. And um, I know that some of my advanced water managers and, and the people who are totally tied into weather track are already doing this and have made it a part of the process. Um, but it is something that I encourage all users to do because as a, in my nerdy certified water manager class, uh, that's what they teach you. The first thing they teach you is make a controller chart and make a map. Don't waste water looking for where the water is running. 
And that's where our head is at with these types of features. And that's where we really want to continue to drive um, and make sure that, that you guys are getting the value out of having these features. No, I, I'd open it up to our audience. If you've got feature requests or suggestions of ways we can continue to enhance and improve this, please let us know through a direct email to one of us or just here in this session. But as you can see, when we started the mobile app journey, we were simply an on-off button. And we really enhanced that over the last four years to become a true value-added tool to both the property owner as well as the contractor. And so our, we just want to make it better. So you're our customer, you're our target audience for this. Please let us know what we can do to be better for you. Absolutely. I, I think as a distributor or even a contractor, I think it's a, a way to drive revenue as well, because I think it's something that we could start billing in um, to our services as far as mapping that out. Mm -hmm. Either for a contractor and be their partner for that or for an end user who maybe is in the middle of changing contractors and wants to get that map in place before they let the new bid, you know, lots of different ways to do that. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. And then I had one quick thing that I wanted to show because we're doing an app demo and we just came out with an awesome new feature on the mobile app. I have to show you one quick little bonus. It's not mobile mapping, but uh, we do have, um, we did just add a great feature for OptiFlow users called multi-manual. Um, and it's not really a feature that we would do a whole episode on, but um, if you are an OptiFlow user, we just have fully released uh, the ability to run multiple stations manually at the same time. So if you are looking to do that on an OptiFlow controller, uh, you go over here to the multiple stations manual. And down here on the bottom, you see this option down on the bottom left. The left icon means I want to run one station at a time or in weather track terms, we call this stack, right? And if you switch that, uh, you're saying I wanna run all of these stations at the same time, we call that overlap. So if I wanted to run stations one, two, and three at the same time, I could easily select those stations and say start all. And when I send that, it will literally send the signal to start all three um, as many as nine stations in the field at the same time. So uh, I think that this is just another example of how we continue to listen and how we continue to add great features that, um, especially in my market, winterization uses this type of feature all the time. So um, a great new ad from the engineering team that I'd like to thank them for, because I think that is super awesome. Um, all right, and Clarkson, we are going to start to move in on the finish line here. We're running out of time. And I ask all of my guests, uh, what does WeatherTrack save you? WeatherTrack saves me, um, I guess, a lot of hours in a day, uh, just for the fact that I can uh, have remote access, uh, just via phone app if a customer calls and just needs some general assistance or if it's something that I need to dive in deeper and change some programming or uh, that they're not accustomed to, pro I can I can do it from my, my laptop. Uh, so it, it's something that versus having to drive to a site and manually do it physically at the controller. And uh, so, you know, that's that's probably what I, I enjoy about it is just having the uh, the access, uh, the freedom to, to do it when, whenever. And it, it just, so we just, uh, uh, like I say, it saves me a lot of hours in a day. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, all right. And that brings us to the finish line on this quick demonstration of WeatherTrack mobile uh, and mobile mapping. I do want to plug what we have coming up next week. It, it sounds very exciting. Um, let me get back into our... Oh, and before we plug next week, always here to support, right? We have... Uh, many, many support resources. We're dedicated to making sure that our users are successful out in the field. So 
if you are in the field and you have questions, you can always use our customer support team available six days a week with bilingual support. Uh, if you are in your office, you can access our online resources, troubleshooting documents or um, more technical like sales documents, text sheets and stuff from uh, the resources tab at hydropoint.com. And then there's the training. Um, free online on-demand certified training that we provide for our users to make sure that they are um, fully aware of all of the different tools and resources available for weather track users. And, and Ben, let's not forget to promote the YouTube channel as well, where a number of tips and tricks live. We might want to publish that URL, but if you just went to YouTube and typed weather track, you'd get our channel with lots of different ways to clear an alert or troubleshoot a flow condition. Ben's done a great job of giving a whole tutorial online series because you can never have it too much, Ben. <laughs> That's not what my wife says, but I appreciate that. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, and then next week we have a great uh, special guest um, where we're going to talk about the sustainability and corporate responsibility that um, some of our customers are using WeatherTrack as an instrumental part of their sustainability program. Um, yeah, ben Slick. Uh, Shali Shampat is a great uh, resource. Kilroy Realty manages multifamily, commercial office, light industrial. They're a, a real estate investment trust. And um, this will be a sustainability angle where they talk about how they generate you know, water savings in al alongside their kilowatt hours and BTU savings for measuring their sustainability efforts and their footprint. I think that's exciting and, and a great perspective on uh, kind of what we all do, but in a very organized and, and succinct way, a very focused way around corporate sustainability and responsibility. So I look forward to that and look forward to seeing you all next week. Um, with that, I'm Ben Coffey. I will be here every week. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you. And thank you, Andy Clarkson, for being a great special guest this week. Ben Flick. Appreciate you. Andy, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for tuning in again. Please email questions to us. If we can follow up on a one-on-one, -on -one. Uh, if you want a private tour of this with a scheduled demo, we can arrange those things for you. So let us know. Thanks, everybody. See you next week. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye, Andy. Thanks, Andy. Bye. Thanks. Bye.